fun tutorial on how to cut really big pieces of fabric. So if you're making a quilt pattern, um, maybe one of mine like Adventureland, Maypole, Sugar Pop, or the new Star Cross pattern, you need to cut some big shapes. Today I'm cutting a 37 inch square. This is for Star Cross. That square is then gonna be sliced into triangles. So we wanna make sure that our square is accurate. 37 is bigger than some of your cutting mats. Some of your cutting mats are just 36 by 24. So I'm gonna show you how to use a marking tool, a measuring tape, and a pair of shears. Uh, that's gonna be all you need to make, um, uh, to cut a square that's larger than your cutting mat. I'm also gonna show you ways to fold the fabric and still use your beloved rotary cutter and ruler. Anything goes. We just want to be accurate. It's easier than you think. Join me. Okay, here we are on my huge cutting mat. Now, I realize this is a luxury for most of my quilting career. I did not get a mat this big. Um, so we're, I'm going to show you some shortcuts, assuming that you have a smaller mat. This is a, just a big chunk of fabric that I cut, so I'm not working with tons of yardage. Now, first, I would fold just like normal. I would take my fabric and fold it selvage to selvage, okay? So here's my selvage. This is just what you would do normally when you're cutting a quilt. So we just wanna get one clean edge. It's always good to get one clean edge. So I have selvage to selvage right here. Here, I'm just gonna lay it right here. I'm gonna line up this horizontal line on my ruler with the fold of my fabric and I'm gonna give myself one clean edge. Here we go. Off you go. Okay, in addition to that, I'm gonna show you another little trick that you can do if you just wanna keep using your ruler and rotary cutter. Try to move your fabric as little as possible because we know that this is a nice perpendicular cut. It's nice and straight. You can take your fabric and you can fold it as many times as you need. Maybe I'll just fold it once just like that. Maybe I'll fold it in half just because that makes sense. Okay, here we go. And then from there, you can give yourself another cut, making sure you always line up on the horizontal line. So my next cut, after I have one cut, see this is lined up, is to give myself another cut along the selvage, okay? So for demonstration purposes, I'm still just gonna stick with my ruler and rotary cutter, because I think that's probably fastest. My next couple cuts, I'm gonna be using this marker in my, I promise I am gonna get to that measuring tape. Okay, here we go. Okay, off you go. All right, what are we working with here? Now we have two, two nice clean edges. Okay, I'm gonna open you up. So now with my measuring tape, because as you can see, my ruler is only 24 inches. That's not very helpful. So with my measuring tape, this is where you kind of have to crawl around a little bit, right? I'm gonna line up one edge all the way, let's get really close. I'm wearing a baseball hat, even though I'm by myself, because I'm having just the worst hair day. <laughs> it's not stopping me from doing this, this video though. Okay, what I say, 37? Okay, how about we, we are, we're gonna measure twice, just so we cut once, just so we really get this right. Okay, my next cut is gonna be this way. So I have, here we go. I want this at the zero, you at 37. Okay. There we go. So now I'm just gonna keep measuring from this top cut area, 37 inches down. And I'm gonna give myself tick mark after tick mark until I have a nice guideline all along this edge. And then I'm gonna cut. You can go back to your ruler. You can give yourself a line that you actually cut, or if you're feeling really, feeling really confident, 
You can use your rotary cutter. I'm not feeling really confident because I kind of messed it up the first time. Here we go. <laughs> you can just hear that tin foil. It's an app, it's a needle turn applique project that I'm working on and I like to use foil to prepare my applications. But then I end up with just this pile of really rattly foil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's grab these scissors. I'm going to cut precisely on this line. Ta-da! Okay, we're going to discard you. Okay, so now we know this is 37 and we know these are perpendicular to that. We know this is 37. So now we need to measure 37 from this corner to this side, yes? Okay, now we're at zero all the way over to 37. That's what I have here. I'm gonna give myself a little tick mark. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing where I just go through and I just do z Mommy. Yes, honey? Mommy. Yep. I'm upstairs in my office. It's almost time. You can go ahead and get your shoes on. <laughs> that is my four-year-old son. <laughs> He's really excited to leave the house with me. <laughs> tick mark after tick mark, just going right on up the line. And the good thing is if you draw enough tick marks, any kind of inaccuracies kind of work themselves out because you use a ruler to then find the straight line where they all match. If that makes sense. 37, I'm gonna do a little bit of yoga stretching right there. Okay, so now I have all of my tick marks. And again, you can fold your fabric in half and you know, you can do that. Uh, I think you'll get a little bit less accuracy, but um, maybe not much. You can definitely try it. And here I'm going to show you, I'm just going to get really confident. Okay, so again, I have my horizontal line, lining that up. Okay, I think we're looking good. I'm just going to go for it with my rotary cutter. What do you say? No, that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> I had like so much confidence for a second. You know what I'll do first? I'll do my line first and then I'll do my rotary cutter just to make sure I'm really on track here. Okay, how's my horizontal guide looking over here? Oh, fantastic, okay. Great, oh, there we go. Okay, so now I can use my, oh, now I can use my rotary cutter, or I can use scissors. There we go, okay, fantastic. So that really is the hardest part in these quilts. It's just cutting a square that is really big. Voila. Now that we've cut our huge square, the next step is to slice it into four quadrants. These quadrants are gonna be triangles. You can see that I already have my creases right here. Let me just do a replay and show you how I got these creases. So first I fold corner to corner matching up this corner, do a little, you know, judging, a little moving around, just to make sure you get it lined up because you want your creases to be accurate because your creases are where you're gonna cut. So you want your cutting to be accurate. Now I'm gonna go this way. Here we go. You can already see I'm kind of falling off my creases. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I have it folded twice and I'm gonna take either a roller, a hair marker. You could even use your ruler. Let's grab a ruler. Any kind of flat edge. Your fingernail will work if you have, um, you know, sturdy fingernails. And with your roller, you're just gonna really dig into that crease because you want it to be visible. If it's not visible, then it's gonna be really hard to cut. So here I'm just rubbing with my hair marker along those creases. You can do it separately. So you can do it one crease and then like this way, 
and then fold it and do a second crease, or you can do them both at the same time, whichever you find gives you more accuracy. And before I cut, this is a new trick I've recently learned, so I'm gonna show you here. I am going to take some batting tape and I'm gonna walk over to my iron and I'm going to adhere some batting tape right in the center of these creases on the wrong side of my fabric. So my fabric is a solid. That means it's the same on the front side and the back side, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you have a print, make sure that you're using this on the wrong side of your fabric, so you don't want it to show. And I'm going to adhere some batting tape right down the center of this crease, okay? Now I'm doing that because when we cut triangles, we're gonna be cutting bias edges. These are 45 degree angles, uh, and that's gonna be stretchy. So what this batting tape is gonna do, or you can use fusible webbing, something really thin, uh, it's gonna stabilize that stretchy edge. Okay, I'm gonna go iron it. So I now have this beautiful X, and you can still see my crease lines, but if you're at all worried about your crease lines showing when you're at your iron and you're ironing this fusible webbing or batting tape, uh, go ahead and mark your line with a water-soluble marker. Don't use the, um, the kind that disappears under heat because you know, you're ironing. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna make my cuts along this line. You can even use this 45 degree line on your ruler as a nice guide mark to make sure that you're on track. So let's see. Okay, here I have my line, my 45 degree line on my ruler. I can start cutting away and keep going. And you can do this with the fabric folded. I've done that before, it's very accurate. So if you don't have a cutting mat as large as mine, I do suggest doing that. Okay, can you see this? Well, I don't know if you really can, but if, normally if I was stretching bias fabric, it would just go like that, like an accordion, but really it's pretty much pretty stable, like as if it was on grain, which is very exciting. So exciting. Okay, I'm just gonna wing it with this little corner here. That's good enough. And then I can even stack these on top of each other if I wanted to. But, you know, it's going to go pretty much just as fast for me to do them one at a time. So here I go. Once again, I can use that 45 degree mark on my ruler. Let's see here. Just like that. There it is. All right, off I go. And then again, I'm going to use this horizontal line on my ruler. The more you can use your ruler, to make sure that your cuts are staying perpendicular, the better. Don't use your mat. Mats can be inaccurate. Okay, once again, you have that, well, you know, I didn't iron that that well, but it, it really does stabilize it quite nicely. And what I like about the batting tape is that it's, there's no added thickness. So if you get some fusible interfacing, it will add some thickness, uh, but not with the batting tape. And then once it's all sewn together in your quilt, uh, you will have no idea that it's there. Okay, we'll do our one final cut. Okay, and we're done. One little show-offy stretch slash non-stretch. Voila!